So this is a video I've wanted to do for a little while now. Uh, ever since I finished my second helmet, uh, I did want to compare it to my first helmet and just show you guys how, how much of an improvement can be made between projects. Um, if we look at the helmet on the right side right now, that is the first helmet I made and that has the full walkthrough uh, YouTube tutorial series that, that I did on my channel. Um, and you can kind of follow along with that if you're interested. Um, but I, I have a new helmet here on the left uh, that I took a lot of the learnings from that first helmet uh, and then greatly improved it for the second helmet. So uh, what you see on the right hand side is a helmet made with 20 gauge steel um, as well as brass accents. Um, and then I've used leather and then I've used uh, nails as the uh, rivets for it. So um, a lot of that's kind of uh, beginner kind of work of, of how you kind of get started with this. Um, and what I wanted to do was really kind of up my game for the next helmet that I did, uh, which we're seeing on the left hand side now is the uh, new kind of version of that helmet. So they both kind of have this uh, bird of prey kind of owl kind of motif to them. But for the second helmet, I really wanted to help uh, drive that home with the design that it really gives that uh, that bird feel uh, to it. So uh, other things that we can notice here, I guess, as well, while we're looking at that helmet is uh, there is no cheek guards on it like there is on the first helmet. Uh, instead, I opted to go uh, and make a full Aventail uh, and I'll get up close on this as well so that we can kind of get a more detailed view of this uh, afterwards. And I'll show you the differences and the uh, similarities between the two helmets as well as, as we go through. But uh, just as we're giving an overview right now, th those are the main differences here, um, is the, the steel thickness going from the 20 gauge up to the 18 gauge, um, as well as adding, uh, so there's a, a more substantial uh, nasal guard on the new one, um, and then the Aventail with the full uh, chain mail uh, as well on it. And I'll, I'll go into more detail on that in one second. So uh, let's just kind of start. I'm gonna come in on the uh, first helmet uh, and we'll talk about it right now. All right, so looking at this helmet, the first thing you're probably gonna notice is just the overall roundness of it. When we look at the, the dome shape here, um, a mistake I made was basing the design relatively off of a geometric form rather than on an anatomical form. Um, and this is just a mistake that gets made uh, by a lot of people starting out from what I've seen anyway. Um, is we try and base it on a, a mechanical design rather than a uh, anatomical design, so working with the human form itself. Um, and you'll see stuff like that in my other videos with the uh, comparing the gauntlets as well. Uh, you'll notice that uh, working with the human form itself is integral to being able to make uh, quality armor. Um, so uh, whenever we look at the diameter from ear to ear on this, it's almost the same diameter as from the front of the head to the back of the head. And what this does is this actually makes this look uh, very bulky and kind of overbearing on the, the wearer whenever you put it on. You'll also notice things like the rivets, uh, <coughs> sorry, the rivets being flat on this. Um, there's nothing wrong with flat rivets, but just the fact that I didn't kind of polish the ends of these or anything like that to give them a more finished look uh, is something that could have been done as well. Um, I didn't have a English wheel as well uh, whenever I was making this helmet, so the overall uh, kind of finish on the planishing is a little bit less than what it could be uh, with, that, uh, with the help of that tool. Um, finally, I guess the, the other major uh, difference is the actual liner on the inside of the helmet, and I'll, I'll show this helmet on uh, as well so that we kind of get a view of it, but the internal liner on this is just a three panel liner. Um, it's made at, out of a cotton uh, material on the inside and that, and it's padded, but none of these panels are actually uh, connected. They're just kind of free floating in there. So that doesn't allow for any kind of adjustment in and out if you need the uh, helmet to sit differently on your head. Um, it does sit on my head well enough, uh, but it would only sit on my head well enough. So if someone else needed to wear it, there's no, uh, no way to adjust that. So, all of these uh, points, I've just quickly gone over it for this one, uh, but we'll, we'll jump in and check out the other helmet now. All right, so when we're looking at this helmet, the second helmet compared to the first one, uh, the thing you're gonna notice the most, I think, is probably the overall craftsmanship improvements uh, that I was able to make to it. So the overall form being more anatomical and that it fits the head more 
uh, precisely. Uh, we don't have that extra bulky look from side to side. Uh, this is more of an oval shape that will fit on the head. Um, and then as well as just things like having the dome rivets, having the uh, English wheel in order to create a more uh, smooth, planished finish. Uh, I still left a lot of the uh, texture in there. Uh, I didn't kind of sand any of that out because I like that kind of worn, uh, rustic look as I had mentioned in the other, uh, with the other helmet. Um, but just the general refinement of it is a lot better. The overall shape of it too, in terms of the ocular, uh, which I'll mention is not a historically accurate ocular. This is uh, very much Viking inspired. Um, in that it is a Spangenhelm design with the four panels uh, and the frame. Um, but having that kind of ocular look more like the bird and more like an owl uh, definitely sells the kind of uh, initial feel I wanted to get with the, the first helmet. So um, that said, I'm going to get us in closer so that we can see some of the details here a little bit more. And I'll show you guys some uh, pictures and, and uh, kind of like in progress shots along the way of the construction of this so that this can serve as kind of a making of as well. Uh, so let's do that next. All right, so let's flip this over so that we can see the inside of it and kind of compare the liner to the uh, original helmet liner there. And we're just going to do this quickly and get the chain mail out of the way. So if we look at the internal of this helmet, uh, it's obviously something that looks much more historically accurate. Um, I did base this off of uh, medieval helmet liners, like later medieval period helmet liners, because there isn't uh, any examples, uh, at least that I'm able to find, of actual helmet liners from the uh, early to mid Viking era. <clears throat> so but what you can see that's much different, there's much less padding in here. There is a ring of padding uh, kind of around the headband area um, within the uh, uh, linen. Uh, and obviously, yes, this is linen as opposed to uh, cotton from the first helmet. Um, but yeah, what, what the change was here was I went to a four panel design. Um, I cut kind of eyelets with uh, sewn holes here that allow you to thread a uh, either a string or in this case a piece of leather through uh, that allows you to kind of adjust the center uh, portion of the helmet to fit a smaller head or a larger head rather a, sh a shorter or a taller head in this case um, within this uh, helmet and that way it's not just a one size fits all kind of thing. Um, obviously again mentioning the anatomical design and that this is much more uh, oval in shape um, and I did use a little more accurate materials this time and the fact that linen would have been more available than cotton. In fact cotton might not have even been available at all. Um, but then we look at uh, the Aventail, we have a liner for the Aventail itself, kind of a skirt that protects the wearer's neck from the uh, chainmail rings. Um, and then if we do check out the chainmail itself, so um, I'm not historically accurate on this at all because uh, I did use galvanized uh, steel wire for the kind of accent rings here and then it's blackened uh, uh, mild steel wire for the uh, rest of the rings as well. But in order to kind of give it that uh, more historically accurate look, what I did was I individually flattened each one of the rings uh, with an overlapped portion. So if I get in closer, I'll see if the uh, camera will focus. Um, but the rings do look like they could have been riveted. They don't have the rivets themselves through them. Um, so I, I would call this, uh, it's not technically butted mail. Uh, it likely doesn't provide significant protection beyond butted mail, but um, it, maybe it would be considered like overlapped mail or something like that. Um, and all that is, is just like a precursor to, uh, what true riveted mail would be, which is where any of these flat points, uh, would have a, a hole either punched or drifted through them. Um, and then you'd be able to put a small rivet on each one that would give these the extra strength needed, uh, to protect the wearer from heavy blows. Uh, it, in this case, slashes and that you'd likely be safe from. Uh, but if someone's ever hit you with something heavy in the neck, uh, these would probably break apart. So um, they'd still protect one or two blows, but not, not likely in the long term. Um, we can look at the way that this is fastened as well uh, with this leather band kind of uh, internal on the helmet. Let's see the inside again. So if we look here, the way this is fit on the inside is that this liner is kind of all one piece. Um, so rivets kind of attach the entire liner as one piece and I'll show you pictures at the end of this video. I'll do like a slideshow uh, that can show some kind of progress pictures. 
Um, but the idea is, is that if anything were to happen to the liner uh, or the uh, aventail itself, uh, you can take the entire uh, kind of structure out of the inside of the helmet without really damaging uh, anything on the outside other than uh, wearing down some rivets so that you can get the uh, mechanism out. Um, so all of that said, uh, let's do some comparisons of how it actually fits on the wearer's head. So we'll show that next. All right, so let's take a look at the first helmet compared to the second helmet whenever you're actually wearing it on your head. So uh, let me just grab uh, the first helmet here. And again, even just comparing it side by side on, on the screen here, you're seeing the roundness and kind of the bulkiness of it. Uh, whenever we do put it on, you can see the kind of width ear to ear over the front and back uh, is, is almost the same. Uh, it's a little bit on the oval side, but the, the overall shape is kind of very bulky, very big. Um, and what I wanted to improve on this obviously was getting it to fit the anatomical form a little bit better. The other thing that we're noticing uh, that you can see right here where my eye level is, is that the liner is actually too padded because it's not coming down far enough uh, to allow my eyes to be center on the oculars. If I do tilt the helmet forward, the problem becomes that the, uh, the nasal on the inside actually is touching my nose uh, on the inside of the helmet, which isn't good either, because if you were to take a hit on the front of the head, uh, that nasal is not doing what it's meant to do, which is protect the nose. Uh, instead, you could probably break the nose or something like that, um, which is not something you'd want to have happen. But overall, for a first attempt, I think that this isn't too bad. Um, I'm just going to move the light a little bit just to see if we can get a little bit better lighting here on the helmet. There we go, that's a little bit better. Um, so we take a look at it like this and, and we just know like without wearing the rest of the armor of wearing like a large gambeson or wearing any kind of shoulder protection, it just looks off. It just looks too big. Um, so let's, let's compare that now uh, to the new helmet. All right, so one thing to note with the new helmet, you probably noticed it whenever I was showing the liner uh, and that before, but the inside of the helmet, all of the steel on the inside, uh, I've painted with a, a gray paint uh, just to try and prevent uh, corrosion and uh, any kind of rusting on that on the inside. Uh, the outside has the linseed oil finish on the outside um, and that just helps seal it in. It does give it this slightly yellowed look uh, whenever, like for me, I can see the yellowed look. I don't know if the camera's picking it up that much. Um, but it gives a yellowed look and kind of more of a uh, uh, sheen to it rather than a uh, kind of shine with the, the uh, just the polished steel underneath. So uh, that said, let's try it on and we'll see. So you can see here that the fit is much better uh, than the first helmet. It, it doesn't look as wide, it doesn't look as bulky as that first helmet. Um, it's not touching my nose at all on the inside and the nasal piece is, is much sitting off is sitting off of my face so that taking a blow to the front of the head uh, kind of your forehead and the band uh, will take a lot of that force rather than uh, breaking your nose underneath there. Um, the other thing you can notice uh, as well is the liner is set so that my eyes fit in the center of the ocular holes so that my peripheral vision now the, the eye holes on these are a little bit uh, larger uh, than the first helmet, but my peripherals are not greatly hindered here. Um, and then my, my forward vision and that obviously is much better. Um, the aventail itself, if we look where it sits, it could be slightly longer if you wanted to, um, but overall that sits in a good position uh, to protect the neck. Um, and obviously if you had a gambeson on or something like that, had a collar, uh, that would provide a little bit of extra uh, kind of protection for your neck and that as well under there. The other thing too, if I had my, my big beard uh, that I had before in, in previous videos, uh, that would kind of make this also look much more proportionate. But overall, I'm quite happy with the way this helmet looks and the way it feels. It puts a little bit of pressure on the front and back. Uh, you'll probably see a little red mark on my head just where the, uh, the stitching sits, but it's not by any means uncomfortable. And then the little bit tighter fitting allows it to actually stay stay on the head a little bit better. Uh, and that's without any kind of chin strap or anything like that. So um, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. So all of that said, um, just gonna put it down here for a second. 
I'm going to uh, show you guys a little bit of a slideshow uh, here at the end just so you can kind of see some of the work in progress shots along the way um, and that way you can see how it's built as well. Um, I didn't take a lot of actual video of me making it, I just found that uh, I do better work whenever I'm not trying to film everything. Um, I know I can fill bit, film bits and pieces of things but uh, it just is a more uh, laid back kind of experience. I, I get to take my time doing things rather than worrying about uh, batteries dying or SD cards filling up and things like that. So um, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you liked the uh, progression from one to the next and just seeing uh, how, how someone can improve uh, basically their craft as they go along. So uh, all that said, enjoy the uh, slideshow and uh, hope to see you guys in the next one.